teenagers in Canada are being faced with a new temptation, and this one is lethal. On the street, it's known as the patch. To a pharmacist, it's known as fentanyl, a potent painkiller 100 times stronger than morphine designed to relieve the pain from cancer. After OxyContin was banned, the transparent patch made an entry. With a high so powerful, teens are getting hooked. Our Jennifer Tryon recently spent a week in an Ottawa suburb where use of the drug is causing alarm. There's a slight chill in the air. The faintest smell of sweat. Adrenaline is high. It's game day. Let's stop. For the past 12 years, Dennis Westwell has been a loyal fan, devoted to one team, his grandson, Tyler's. I went to everything. I loved it. You could see he was getting better each week, each month, each year. He was learning new things. But this year, there are no games for Dennis to attend. His grandson, Tyler Campbell, tried Patch, the prescription painkiller fentanyl. It's 100 times stronger than morphine. He was only experimenting. He wasn't a regular user. He didn't build up a resistance. And to what him seemed like just a regular dose was too much. During the night, Tyler stopped breathing. The next morning, his family found him in bed cold and blue. His grandfather got a call he'd rather forget. I don't really remember what she said. My head was just spinning. But I finally said to her, are you telling me that my grandson is dead? She said, yes. I couldn't bring him back. It's our worst nightmare. Manitick, Ontario. It's a combination of old town charms and new money. It was here, Peter, like so many other kids in the area, first tried patch. It looked so innocent, so we started doing it and didn't think anything of it. And you got you this. You thought it was innocent. Yeah, well, it looks like it's a clear little patch, and we started by putting it on our gums. Patch is anything but innocent. Fentanyl is a type of opioid similar to heroin, morphine, and codeine. It started gaining momentum when OxyContin was being phased out of the market. Peter's dealer offered up fentanyl patches in Oxy's place. We didn't even know there was a physical dependency to opiates, so we just started doing it, and it slowly escalated. We all had money because we were all working full time. We just got cars, and we had nothing else to do. The clear patch is designed to slowly release one of the most powerful prescription pain medications over a three-day period. It's meant to be used by cancer patients or to treat chronic pain. It's a painkiller, so you you get you feel down. Like sometimes you start to fall asleep, like fall asleep while you're awake. You start. It's called nodding out. Nodding out is the drug dampening the body's central nervous system. For Peter, which is not his real name, that kind of high was incredible. To sustain his habit, he started stealing. You either trade them straight TVs. So many different drug dealers were taking. You're trading TVs. Oh, we trade TVs. Yeah, we trade TVs. We trade gold. That's what I mean. We do anything and everything. It How was much would a TV get you? Not a, a day. We lost ourselves and we started stealing. I robbed my best friend's house. That's how bad it was. I feel so bad, and I can never, I can never make it up. I can never take it back. Guilt wasn't Peter's only consequence. He was convicted of breaking and entering into 20 different homes and had to spend time in jail. But Patch isn't just this small town's problem. Over the last few years, reports of fentanyl misuse have popped up in Australia, Estonia, and across Canada. 
Michelle Arnott is a professor of pharmacology and toxicology at the University of Toronto. She says high doses of fentanyl can decrease the brain's ability to control breathing. You begin to blunt the drive to breathe so that at higher doses or at overdose um, exposures, you actually stop breathing. When patch is used properly, it can make for an effective pain medication. There's a constant amount of fentanyl that is being released from the patch. Its onset of action is relatively quick, uh, much faster than uh, morphine, and it gives quite significant pain relief. Arnott took 16 by 9 into her lab to show us how strong fentanyl really is. So this is the amount of fentanyl that would be released so uh, over a 24-hour period from the patch. Just that tiny bit? Just that tiny amount. So this is the amount of morphine that you would have to take that would be equivalent to that amount of fentanyl. So you need very, very little in order to exert an effect. You may be taking a quarter of that and overdosing. Right, yes. But the strength isn't the only danger. The drug is not evenly distributed along the patch. Arnott says that makes misusing a fentanyl strip like playing a game of Russian roulette. With the fentanyl, you have no idea what that amount of drug is that you're exposing yourself to at any given time. They might cut up one corner of the patch and they may not get the high or the nods that they're expecting. And so they'll say, well, next time I'll cut twice as much. And that might be not just twice the dose, that might be four times the dose. It's the best feeling ever, but at the same time, withdrawing is the worst feeling ever. At points when you're withdrawing, you just want to die. When 16 by 9 met Peter, he hadn't used patch in three weeks. I've been clean every day. I don't, I don't have a single craving. He's on methadone maintenance, a treatment given once a day to curb addicts' cravings. For now, the small doses are helping Peter stay clean, helping him put his life back in order. It's not who I was, and I'm back now. I'm back to being myself. Why didn't Tyler get a second chance? Man. It's the first time Dennis has been back here since Tyler's death. The first season without his grandson on the ice. Well, that was the hardest part, him not being on the ice. And I kept looking for his number 26. This used to be a place where Dennis felt at home. Now it's only a place of loss. An emptiness he hopes other families never have to experience. We will never ever be the same. There are holes in our hearts. And that is our broadcast for tonight. I'm Carolyn Jarvis. From all of us here at 16 by 9, thanks for watching and have a great weekend.